for sure. And that Mohamed Salah goal, I know you mentioned it already, will be up there with goals of the season for, for sure. Putting world-class defenders on their on their backside, man. Yeah. Yes, people, yes, people, yes, people. Welcome back to the We Talk Football podcast. Back again with my guy, Kwaku. It's been a while since we've been in the studio, but how are you doing, man? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Um, yeah, been been very busy for both of us at the moment. Just like things opening up and just life hitting you at a million miles per hour. But it's good to be back in the studio recording another podcast. Yeah, it's, but it's uh, life's moving and life's happening, but, you know, it is what it is and you move with it. But Kwaku, my God, I've got to ask you one question. One question. Have you seen Squid Game yet? No. No, I haven't. Um, it's on my list. Uh, Broski. Yeah, I know. It's on my list. I feel like I've seen all the memes and I'm trying to avoid them because I do want to watch it, but just haven't had the time yet. But yeah, it, it sounds like it's really good. I don't know if, to, if I do watch it, watch it in dubbed or subtitles. Mate, well, I finished the, the series yeah. already. So I, I had a weekend off, for, I want to say the first time in a long time where I wasn't, you know, where I didn't have any sort of plans or anything. So I spent the weekend, like binged it as I do with Netflix. That's why no shows... That's why I've never got anything to watch because I watch them within the space of a few days. I watched it, I watched the dub version, no subtitles, because apparently the subtitles aren't very accurate. So that's what I would say. Really? But like with dubs, I always find it a little bit jarring because they like, move and they say stuff and it's just like... I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to decide. I might try one episode of the dub, one, one episode of the subtitles. But yeah, I've heard, I've heard good things about it. So that's definitely on my tick list. Yeah, and the memes are everywhere. Memes are everywhere, um, and you know, get watching it soon, bro. Because I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. So, what else happened this weekend? Well, big games all over the Premier League. It was an incredibly good weekend for Chelsea for multiple reasons. But to start off, let's talk City Liverpool. Did you see the game, Quakes? Yeah, mate. It was um, it was definitely the game of the weekends, the game that everybody hoped for. Um, the first half uh, started pretty slowly, but it kicked into life in the second half and. Both, I think the two best teams in the league over the last four years really put on a show and really demonstrated what the Premier League is all about. It's all about high intensity. It's all about goals. Um, it's all about controversy as well. There was um, a few decisions that that Man City can be can feel hard done by. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a good game. Probably the best game of the season. And it was good to see the star names, the star attractions, getting on the score sheet and affecting the games in the biggest ways. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and yeah, to highlight one of the decisions you were talking about, it's... It's baffling how, in a in an age where VAR exists in football, it's baffling to see how that isn't a, you know, a second yellow on the on Milner. Uh, that that, you know, it's, it's GBH. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, crazy game, crazy game. It highlighted the um, the quality of both sides, and like you say, best the best two teams in the league for the last few years. And I think it had the two best players in the league right now. Or Arguably in world football, in Kevin De Bruyne and Mohamed Salah. Yeah, no, they um, they were incredible. Mo Salah, there's not much more that needs to be said about this guy. He's almost underrated at this point. I feel like if he was South American, if if he was European, he might be more acclaimed than he is already. Because for the last four or five seasons since he's joined Liverpool, he's just been consistent. Uh, he's always going to give you twenty plus goals in the Premier League. He's always going to give you those moments. He's always going to get you out of trouble when you need it. And the second goal was just evidence of that. It was pure genius from Mo Salah. The way he he took on a couple of men and just finished it with his weak foot into the far corner against Edison, who's no mug. Um, it was an incredible goal away from home at Anfield. Liverpool and Man City have developed this rivalry over the last three or four years. And in the highest moments or the highest stakes moments, Mo Salah delivered for Liverpool yet again. And let's not forget that he got the uh, the assist as well for the Mane opening goal. So. So he he had his fingerprints all over this game and and yeah it was just great to watch one of the Premier League stars really deliver on the bigger stage. That's it and big players perform in the big games and Mohamed Salah has been doing it for years now so he has to be in the conversation. I mean he has to be in the conversation for me personally of one of the best one-footed players of all time in my opinion but he has to be in the conversation right now for you know the best player in the world and I know I just said that a few moments ago but I want to hear your opinions. I know we've been saying this for a little while on the podcast and you yourself have, have been flying the flag for Mo Salah all season. Where do you put Mo Salah in the top five, you know, rankings right now? It's so hard because uh, Messi and Ronaldo are in the category by themselves. So I don't really know if you can include them. In but the is top that the romance today. though? Like, to, to interrupt you, is that the romance? Because ultimately, I'm going top five on form. I'm not saying the best player. You know, 
anyone that's watched football in the last 10 years is probably going to say Ronaldo or Messi. Yeah. But on this season alone, um, come on. Nah, well, this season alone, then like you've got to have... I don't think you can judge it on this season alone because then you're putting players like Mikel Antonio in the top five for discussions, the best players in the, in the world, and he doesn't belong in those conversations. So you've got to kind of include... You've got to include everything, really. Um, and we saw uh, last week Messi and Ronaldo do what they do best in the highest level moments in the Champions League. Mm. Um, Messi scoring that wonder goal and Ronaldo scoring the winner late on against Villarreal for Manchester United. So they're still... They're des- the level that they're descending from and where they're at right now is where is Mo Salah's ceiling. So Messi and Ronaldo were up there and now they've decreased the level that everybody else, the mere mortals in football are at. So we're talking about Ronaldo on his way down, Messi on his way down. Ronaldo outscored Lukaku in the, uh, in the Serie A last season. Lukaku got MVP and got bought by Chelsea for 97.5 million. So yeah. like the levels that they have attained, I don't think that we can ever say that when they step on the football pitch, there's anybody better than them on the pitch. I feel like when Messi steps on the football pitch, Mo Salah, Messi's a better footballer than Mo Salah. Ronaldo steps on the pitch than Mo Salah. Mo Salah's amazing. Ronaldo's just a better footballer. Like it, and okay, they... I'm I'm not I'm not even disagreeing with you. I'm just kind of play uh, trying to play devil's advocate for your arguments because yeah, he is perpetually well. Mo Salah's he's carrying Liverpool right now. I know Mane scored the first goal, but he's performing week in week out. Um, and apart from a few susceptible you know, bad mistakes from the defence uh, across this season, they they would have won a lot of games as a result of Mo Salah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely, yeah. He's definitely top five, but it's so difficult to categorise because then, like, do you bear in mind the defenders or is it just attacking players? So it's so difficult to give you the top five, but Mo Salah is definitely in and around it. He's a world-class player. He's been performing at the highest level for years now, like half a decade. And he was the real catalyst for Liverpool becoming the team that they are. Um, everyone talks about the signings of Van Dijk and Alisson, but that was the cherry on top of the cake. Mo Salah was the son that came in in his first season. He dragged them to the Champions League final. Granted, they lost that final. He, he broke the Premier League goal-scoring record for goals in one season. He was absolutely incredible and he's not really come come off of that since, he, since he's been at Liverpool. He's just been absolutely amazing. He makes players around him better. Like I say, you saw the assist that he provided for Mane and he's he's just become a, a more well-rounded player and granted he's at the end of his 20s but I think he's got another four or five years left. He keeps himself in incredible condition and we're only going to see more goals from Mo Salah in the, in the years to come. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, another question for you: What what did you think about the uh, the joint man of the match award in the game? Uh, pathetic. That's nonsense. That, a, absolute nonsense. Like you just got to make a decision, really. Like a man of the match is a frivolous award. Like <laughs> Budweiser give their own man of the match, then Sky Sports give their own man of the match, and there's so many different man of the matches, so they don't really mean anything. It's just what the commentator decides, and a lot of times I disagree with what the what the commentator decides. But in this case, Gary Neville gave it to Phil Foden and Mo Salah, and they both had amazing games. I think we've got a shout out. Phil Foden massively he loves playing against Liverpool he he really shows up in those games and those are normally the highest leverage games um, you saw him get the I wouldn't say it was assist for the, the Kevin De Bruyne goal but it was the pass before the ball got to uh, Kevin De Bruyne and then you saw the goal that he took brilliantly uh, some fantastic work from Gabriel Jesus took on a couple of men started it into to Phil Foden who ran James Milner ragged for 90 minutes mm-hmm. or for not even 90 minutes for as long as James Milner was on the pitch which should, should have been a lot shorter because he should have been sent off but yeah, Phil Foden really showed up and it's just great to see young English talent flourishing on the biggest stage and he's only going to get better and better and I think it's only going to be a couple of years before he is the best English player. For sure, it's scary thinking about Phil Foden, man, because this is another big moment in another big game. You've only got to go back to the last Liverpool Man City game. He had that outrageous goal then when he he got the win for City. So the fact that he, of his age is only uh, great for English football, but to be his age and putting in these performances time and time again, like you were saying, you know, flowers to Phil Foden. You know, it is difficult because if you pick a an arbitrary award of man of the match, you know, they're both deserving. Yeah. Um, you know, to without kind of trying to upset the tapestry of football, so to speak, I would prefer that it be one man of the match. You know, I don't I, I don't want to start seeing this coming to football where there's one per team. It's just you know? not, it's nonsense. I make a decision. I, I get it. Gary Neville's trying to pay homage or tribute to the fact that it was such a great uh, game from two great teams. Yeah. But man of the match has always been given to, it's not men of the match, it's man of the match. I just make a decision to give it to one player. But they both deserve their flowers. They played incredibly. And it was just, uh, like I say, it was one of the best games of the season so far. For sure. And that Mohamed Salah goal, I know you mentioned it already, will be up there with goals of the season for, for sure. Putting world-class defenders on their on their backside, man. Yeah, he's, um, he's on. This he's, is a brilliant uh, goal. Unreal. On his weak foot as well, the finish just into the side net. And it was just like, everything about that goal was brilliant. Uh, he, he, there's not much more you can say about Mo Salah, man. He's just, he's just so, so, so good. And, 
I feel like it's people are going to be hard pushed to to beat him for Golden Boot this season. I think that he's got that wrapped up. He's uh, he Liverpool lack some attacking outlets. I know Mane's now got back on the score sheet. We now see Firmino on the bench. Shotter pops in with goals here and there, but Mo Salah's going to be their main provider of goals, and so he's going to get way beyond twenty Premier League goals this season for sure. So does Mo Salah still stand as your your Golden Boot prediction? Yeah. Yeah, has yeah, to. He has to. Man. He, has just, to. Just, he has to. He has to have yeah. It's, yeah he, uh, there's other candidates, obviously, um, which have slowed down a little bit. We've got to give Jamie Valdi a shout out because he continues to score goals uh, way, way into his 30s. But Mo Salah, I think, is, has to be the favourite for Golden Boot just because. For sure. He's the only, like, you know, front runner at the start of the season that you would have put in the conversation that is somewhat in the conversation right now. I know Ronaldo's got four, right? But he hasn't scored in a couple. Lukaku hasn't scored in a couple. But you've got, like, players like. You know, unlikely candidates like Jamie Vardy. Obviously, Jamie Vardy, great goal scorer, but no one would have put him in the conversation. No one would have put Mikel Antonio in there, but I still wouldn't put either of them above uh, Mohamed Salah, and I, I still stick by by him, really. Yeah. I think, I, again, I back him 100%. I think, as much as it annoys me that he's a Liverpool fan, and, you know, I, I have no romance with Liverpool Football Club. They've caused me a lot of heartache throughout my year, throughout my years, I should say. But yeah, like I don't look forward to playing Liverpool. Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're dangerous. They're dangerous, but also let's 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 move on to some decisions that went in their favour. They're dangerous because they play at Anfield. They're dangerous because their fans, for big games, rise to the occasion. They do put a lot of pressure on the officials. And Paul Tierney mm. was definitely somebody who felt that pressure. I think he bottled it in some of the decisions. I feel like you saw Pep Guardiola's the Milner reaction. Comp, yeah, the Milner one was was again GBH. Yeah, it, it was it was a couple of incidents. I think that Phil Foden didn't help himself out in terms of when he got court initially he should have probably stayed down he tried to get back up on his feet which is probably the right thing to do in terms of football but in terms of trying to win your team a penalty uh, or get men sent off like he should have stayed down um, and yeah. that, I think that was a penalty and then yeah in the second half you saw Guardiola's reaction on the sideline is absolutely raging and yeah you saw the reaction from Jurgen Klopp subsequent to that getting Joe Gomez to warm up immediately to, to get James Milner off because they were targeting him all game long and I feel like the officials definitely felt the pressure from the Anfield fans 100% and I feel like this game really highlights how the Premier League, in, in the Premier League, anyone can beat anyone because it was only a few weeks ago where you put in a fairly dominant performance against um, Liverpool and I, I only came away with a one-all draw. City come to you and completely batter you, put in like a performance for the ages, well, definitely their best performance of the season, if not the last few years. And then they play against Liverpool and it's a draw. It's like a they, nu- they nullified each other in many, many ways. Yeah, It's crazy how close... I want to say they're the two top teams and I feel like Chelsea are the team that have bridged the gap most of all and I feel like Chelsea have the the highest um, chance to really come into the conversation winning that title but it's crazy how football works man it, it, this is why the Premier League is the, be- the best league in the world because anyone can beat anyone especially when you've got these star players in every single club you know 100% like you see we'll come on to them a little bit but you see a team like Manchester United that are littered of talent in terms of the players they brought in in the shape of Jadon Sancho Varane Ronaldo uh, and they're four favourites for the title, uh, and they're, they're, they're going to be challenging for Champions League places. So it's just, um, it's just shows you the strength and depth of the Premier League. And I feel like the Liverpool versus City game on Sunday was an advert for how great the league actually is.